In the days before TV, families would gather in front of their radios each night to hear their favorite stars perform. One of the great stars of radio drama was the late Basil Rathbone, famous for his movie role as Sherlock Holmes. In 1944, he recorded a version of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, in which he played both narrator and Long John Silver. Big Blue Marble has added animation to that recording and is presenting it beginning right now. Whenever a young boy had adventure, real adventure, that boy was Master Jim Hawkins. Now, Jim was a fine young lad, hard-working, studious, but like most young people, he loved adventure. So he was all ears and full of curiosity as he performed his duties round his mother's inn, the Admiral Benbow, it was called. One day, a strange new lodger arrived. Jim learned that his name was Billy Bones, and it was from him that he eventually obtained the map of the island. Straightway to his good friend, Squire Trelawney, Jim went with a tale of treasure, fabulous treasure, to be had to the taking. And the squire, a man always willing to take a chance, organized an expedition. He obtained a ship in the services of John Silver, who promised to engage a crew, and together with a great... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of my story. It was late one afternoon. It's the early 18th century. Squire Trelawney has dispatched Jim with a note to John Silver. Jim has entered the Spyglass Inn near Bristol on the coast of England, where the old sailor resides, and inquiring for him, is ushered upstairs to his room and told to knock on the door. I... Begging your pardon, sir. Aye, what's one of it? Shiver me timbers, a boy. Yes, sir. Uh, are you John Silver? <laughs> Such be my name, boy. Along John Silver. Who may you be? I, I have a note from Squire Trelawney. <laughs> Have you now? Well, come on, give it to me. Come over here. Come on, my lad. Don't be afraid. Are you ill, sir? You? <laughs> no, I just laid a bed for a bit of rest. Now, tuck the covers around me, will you, boy? Blasted chilly these days. Now, let's see what the squire's note says. Hmm. Hmm. Well. So you are Master Jim Hawkins, eh? Yes, sir. Going to be our new cabin boy, are you? <laughs> Pleased I am to see you. Thank you, sir. So you want to put to sea, do you? Hunt for buried treasure, eh? Treasure? Why, I, I don't understand what you mean, sir. <laughs> oh, come now, my lad. The squire's told me all about you. Your mother keeps the Admiral Bimbo in, does she not? Well, yes, sir. <laughs> you had a bit of uh, excitement there, I'm told. A, a bit, sir. Uh, what happened there? Uh, uh, tell me about it. Well, sir... I was upstairs preparing the rooms for the night when suddenly I heard sounds of a terrible fight downstairs. I ran to the head of the stairs, but I was afraid to go down. And then I heard Billy Bones' voice. Oh, it's a map you want, is it? You'll have to get it up a map, you little buddy. Then there was a clash of swords, and Billy Bones let out a horrible scream. Ah! I heard a man running. I came downstairs as fast as I could, just in time to see the man throw open the door and leave. There was Billy Bones lying on the floor, a cutlass in his chest. I went over to him. <coughs> Billy Bones, are you hurt bad, sir? The, the chest, Jim. The map in the chest. Aye, sir. Beware, Jim. Beware a seafaring man with one leg. A seafaring <coughs> man with one leg? Aye. And when you see him, run for your life. Captain Billy Bones. Uh, and the good Billy Bones died, I suppose. Oh, yes, sir. He died right enough. The chest, uh, <laughs> uh, What chest did he mean, boy? The chest in the room, sir. That's where I found the map. What? Uh, uh, nothing, sir. If, if you've read the note, sir, I'll be returning to the squire with your answer. My answer? Oh, yes, yes. I tell the squire and a good doctor lives here that the crew for the Hispaniola will be ready to sail by the end of August. Oh, my name's not John Silver. Aye, sir. Good day. Good day, lad. <laughs> Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo, ho, ho. Begging your pardon, sir. I forgot to... Well, lad, what's your trouble? 
Yet like you seen a ghost. Still me, Long John Silver, I only got out of bed. I, sir, your leg. My leg? You, you're the seafarer man with one leg. Me? <laughs> Nonsense, lad. One leg I have to be sure, but I'm just an old sailor. Lost my leg to a whale back in, let me see, 68 it was. You didn't know Captain Billy Bones? Billy Bones? <laughs> I heard tell of him. A uh, pirate, wasn't he? Sailed under the Jolly Roger with Captain Flint, Ben Gunn, Red Ruth, Dick and George Merry. You know them. <laughs> no, lad, you should tell of them. Don't be afraid of me, lad. I won't hurt you. <laughs> I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> Jim was a little wary of John Silver. After all, he did have one leg and he was a seafaring man. But Jim overcame his fear and come the end of August, the good ship Hispaniola set sail for Treasure Island. Long John seemed to have few friends among the crew, but he had a pet. It was a parrot. And it had one phrase that kept repeating over and over and over again. Piece of red, piece of red. I have such a blithering mouth. Mr. Silver, sir. Hi, right, Jimmy, lad. What's the parrot saying? Oh, Captain Kidd? <laughs> Why, he's predicting success to our voyage. Right, Captain? Piece of red, piece of red. I call her Captain Kidd after the famous buccaneer. A rare old bird she is, too. Over 200 years old. She sailed the seven seas, Madagascar, Malabar, Suriname, Providence, and Portobello. It's there she learned the pieces of eight, and little wonder. 350,000 of them, Hawkins. <laughs> there was treasure to be had in them days. Mm. But you better not be standing here a gabbing. It's time for the squire's tea. There's a tray for him and the captain. A bass with you now. Aye, aye, sir. And furthermore, Captain Smollett, you know what I think? Ah, oh, well, here's Master Jim. He should have something to say about this. If it wasn't for him finding the map, we wouldn't be here. Jim, Captain Smollett here wants to call the voyage off and turn back. What? Turn back, sir? Aye. He's afraid of uh, mutiny. Mutiny? From the crew, Jim. Most particularly from John Silver. Oh. Oh, well, sir. I, I, I will admit I was afraid of him to begin with, especially after what Billy Bowen said about a seafaring man with one leg. But now that I've come to know Long John, why, he, he seems quite harmless, sir. There, Captain. What did I tell you? Very well. It's on your heads. But mind you, when we land... Oh, what was that? Land! Land! By heaven, so it is. Look out there, gentlemen. There she lies. I've brought you to Treasure Island. Now the rest is up to you. Little did young Hawkins know how wrong he was about John Silver. But he wasn't long in finding out. The ship lay off the coast of Treasure Island. Night had fallen. And like most young boys, Master Jim was hungry. He left his cabin and made his way down to the forecastle, to the apple barrel. Just as he was reaching into the barrel, he heard voices. Jim Leader here. You'll speak soft and you'll keep sober till I give the word. Then you'll have your fun. We'll string them from the highest yard arm. Clap them into irons and make the good Captain Smollett steer the course where we say. <laughs> Fetch me an apple, Dick. There's a barrel full of them right outside. <laughs> Who's that? Wait, mate. Let him go. <laughs> uh, someone uh, was eavesdropping. I'll find out who it was and wring his neck with my bare hands. Squire Trelawney. Sir. Yes, come in, Master Jim. Squire, Captain Smollett, you were right. The men are going to mutiny. Jim, are you certain? I heard them, sir, just now. I was in the apple barrel. My apologies, Captain Smollett. You're in charge. Now, what shall we do? I'm not unprepared for this. Tomorrow we'll go ashore. We'll build a stockade on the beach of the island, transfer the guns and powder. And if they take the ship, they'll be helpless with it. They can't sail her. We'll defend the island and the treasure to the last man. Well, that sounds like a good plan, Captain. Aye, lucky for us, Master Jim found them out. Now they won't take us by surprise. Listen to him. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest, is it? They're singing and they're drinking their rum tonight. Tomorrow they'll wish they never started it. The next morning, all hands went ashore. Jim tried to stay close by the crew. 
But as they plunged into the woods further and further on the island, he became detached from the mutinous pirates, and soon he was hopelessly lost. As he stumbled through the dense growth of the forest, suddenly, he was nearly scared out of his wits by the appearance of a giant black man. Jim stopped in his tracks. Rooted to the ground by fear, he waited as the man came closer. Then only a few feet away, the big man dropped to his knees and held out his arms in supplication. Help! Help! Jim conquered his fear and walked up to him. And he saw that the man was white, but his skin, wherever exposed, was burned by the sun. Even his lips were black. Finally, Jim got up courage to speak. Who... who, who are you? I'm... I'm Ben Gunn. I'm poor Ben Gunn, I am. And I haven't spoke with a man these three years. Three years? Were you shipwrecked? No, lad. Maroon. Stammering phrases, Ben Gunn told his story. Marooned on the island for three years by Captain Flint Billy Bones and Long John Silver. Suddenly shots rang out. The mutiny was on. Ben Gunn and Jim dragged themselves to a little clearing and looked out through the trees toward the ship anchored offshore. There it was. Flying from the mast. The pirate's flag. The Jolly Roger. Well, Captain, this is it. Aye, but we are safe in the stockade. Let them try to take it. I'm worried about young Hawkins, though. He's with the pirates. Jim's a smart lad. He'll find a way to escape. Wait, what's that? What? By the powers, it's John Silver himself. He's coming through the clearing. Stand away, fire. No, no, Captain, wait. He's carrying a white flag. It's a flag of truce. He wants to surrender. Surrender? Into one, it's a trick. Steady now. What do you want with your flag of truce, Silver? Captain Silver, sir, come to offer terms. Oh, it's Captain Silver, is it? Walk slowly. Hold your fire, men. All right, now. Burst yourself over the wall. Give me a hand, will you? Uh, it's hard for a man with one leg. Uh, come on, give me a hand. Keep down, Spire. He can manage himself. Now, what is it you want, Silver? I'll tell you what I want. I come to offer terms, your lives, for the treasure. What? First, have a map of the island, with the treasure plainly marked. We want it. Second, we take the treasure aboard. Third, you chart the cost we give you. Agreed? And you have my word of honor, we'll set you somewhere safely ashore. We'll divide stores with you, man for man. <laughs> Now, you'll own that talking, eh? And a handsomer offer you'll never get. Is that all? Every last word by thunder. Refuse it, and you've seen the last of me but musket balls. Very good. Now hear me out. If you and your men will come up one by one unarmed, I'll engage to clap you in arms and take you home for a fair trial in England. If you won't, I'll see you in Davy Jones. Now, John Silver, tell that to your pirate. Uh, is that your last word? Aye. Now, tramp. Bundle out of here hand over hand and double quick. Huh? Give me a boost up. Don't touch him, men. Give me a boost up. Uh, who give me a hand? Uh, well, then. I spit to you. Before an hour's out, I'll stove in your old blockhouse like a rum puncher. Laugh! Laugh, my thunder! But before I'm through, you'll laugh the other side. And them that dies will be the lucky ones. Fifteen men on a dead man. Next time. Uh, who give me a hand? Uh, uh, well, then. I spit to you. Before an hour's out, I'll stove in your old blockhouse like a rum puncher. <laughs> laugh! Laugh, my thunder! But before I'm through, you'll laugh the other side. And them that dies will be the lucky ones. Having refused Silver's terms of surrender, the battle between the ship's officers and the pirates rages on. And each side had many wounded. 
while off in the little thicket, Jim Hawkins and Ben Gunn watch the proceedings with great interest. Jim, my lad, are you telling me the truth? Aye, Ben, as the Lord is my witness. That ain't Captain Flint's ship? But no, Ben. Flint's dead, but I'll tell you true. There were some of his hands aboard. They're the mutineers. Not, not a man with, with one leg? Aye, Silver. Silver, that was his name. If Long John finds me, I'm as good as pork. Ben, I have a plan. I lad? Even if the pirates find the treasure, they can't get it off the island without a ship. I... I'll have a try at the ship. I'll swim out, cut her anchor, and let her drift down the beach out of sight. I... What then? You make for the stockade. Tell Captain Smalls I sent you. Tomorrow morning, when Silver sees the ship gone, he may surrender. Then we round up our party, heave the ship to off the beach, and set sail for home. Aye. Home? Do you think they'll take me with them? Of course they will, Ben. Wait till the firing dies down a bit, then try for the stockade. Wish me luck, Ben. Aye. That I do. But, Jim, there's something I have to tell you. Listen. They stopped firing. Now's our chance, Ben. Hurry. But, Jim... The stockade, Ben. The stockade. I can run for the sea. With incredible good luck, Jim Hawkins fought the tide and swam out to the ship, accomplishing his purpose exactly according to plan. He cut the anchor and the ship drifted slowly around the bend. Then he swam back to the island and made his way along the beach. His idea was to reach the stockade where he'd be safe. But the night was dark and he became confused. In the half-darkness, he saw a group of men sleeping. Were they Captain Smollett and Squire or... He stumbled against a branch and then... Oh, you don't! Hold still, Worth! Well, shiver me timbers! It's young Jim Hawkins. Yeah, Look, mates, young Jim's come to pay us a visit. Mr. Silver, sir, Captain I... Silver, my lad, and don't explain. I know all about it. You refuse to put in with those lily liver gentlemen of fortune, and you come to take your chances with Long John and his men. <laughs> but there are left of them. No, sir, I didn't. Uh, what's that? I didn't come to put in with you. It was a mistake. Look here, lad. My men are out of sorts. It might be hard to manage. Take your time now, lad. No one's pressing you. But it'll be safer if you say you came to join with us. He ain't even to join. He's a spy. String him up, is what I say. Now hold your tongue. I'm captain here and will do as I say. Now look here, Jim Hawkins. You're within half a plank of death. Or what's alongside worse torture? I can't hold my men off much longer. You won't have need to. You bungled the whole job, Mr. Silver, and part of it's on my account. I heard you plotting the mutiny. I was hiding in the apple barrel. Quiet! Quiet! Now you're marooned on this island. And that's my fault, too. I've cut the anchor and the ship's gone. Avast! You speak the truth, lad. Look out there and see for yourself. Hey! He's cut the anchor, yes. I love his blood. Hold your sword. Hold, I say. Oh. Hey. Oh. He's dead, you know, me. Pay me, will you? Then you'll get what's coming to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a clean mortal wound if ever I saw one. Any more men care to challenge Long John? My cutlass is waiting. Are you hurt bad, lad? No, I'll, I'll be all right. It's a doctor you'll be wanting. I... I'm going to hold you as a hostage, but I'll take you to Dr. Livesey in the stockade. Just give me a word that you'll not try to escape. I, I won't try to escape, Long John. Listen, you lovers. I'm taking this boy to the doctor. Now, uh, perhaps the doctor will be talked into coming back with me and attending to your own wounds. I, uh, some of you could stand it. Have I snow? And I'll expect to find you all sleeping peaceable when I get back. And so Long John, the most bloodthirsty pirate ever to sail under the Jolly Roger since Captain Kidd, actually saved Jim Hawkins' life. In the dead of night, they sneaked up to the stockade and the good doctor, hearing Jim's call, came out and bandaged his wound. Jim might have called out for help and raised the whole stockade, but true to his word to Long John, he did not try to escape, even when Silver left him alone with the doctor. Well, along toward morning, Jim and Silver returned to the pirate camp. It was then that Master Jim Hawkins played his trump card. 
Captain Silver, sir. Hi, lad. You'll be feeling better now. Oh, I feel chipper. I've got something for you. For me? Here it is. Huh. What would it be now? Then? Shiver my timbers! It's the map! It's Billy Bones' map! Billy Bones. Of our Look what we've come by, thanks to Master Jim! Where do you get it, lad? Where do you get it? From the doctor, sir. The doctor! <laughs> Without his knowledge, no doubt. You're a good lad, Jim. Stick with me, and I'll make a pirate of you, second only to Long John Silver. On your feet, men! The treasure's as good as ours! The compass don't lie. East, south, east, by eastern. Right up there is our line for the post star and the jolly dollars. Run for it now, mate. Run for it. It's all yours over the hill. Seven hundred thousand pounds just awaiting for us a few yards further. <laughs> Shiver my timbers. Jim Hawkins, what's the meaning of this? Why, why it's gone, isn't it? The treasure's already been taken. Aye, aye. But who's to blame? Come on! What's that? It's Captain Smollett, the squire, and all the officers. You're surrounded, Long John. Surrender or be blown to bits. What's quick! Surrounded, am I? Come on, men. They won't take us without a fight. Get out of the way, boy. You'll be hurt. Not I. I fight with the squire and the captain. Here they come. Ask them, men. So it's hand to hand combat they'll be wanting. Draw your cutlass, George. Dick Reynolds. Come on! Don't take more than powder and steel, the Beatles. Don't give up, men. We'll die fighting. On your feet. No, you clown guys. We're beaten. We're beaten. Enough. Enough. What I say. Hold your fire, Captain. I know when I'm. I know when I've had enough. Uh, Jim Hawkins, this is all you're doing. Uh, it's a rum day when I let himself be outwitted by a boy. All right, men, unarm them. I'm marching back to the ship, and when you get them there, tap every last one of them in arms. You're sent for me, Captain? Aye, Silver. If I were to keep strict to my duty, I'd keep you in arms till we reached England. Seeing as how you saved Master Jim's life and brought your crew around to work on the voyage home, well, to make matters short, Jim's pleaded for you, and I've agreed to drop the charges. Thank you kindly, sir. Get below now, and let's have no more trouble out of you or the crew. We've set a straight course for home, and I mean to keep it that way. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Silver, sir. Aye, Jim. Huh. Come along with me to the forecastle, lad. There's a question I want to ask you. If it's about the treasure... Aye, the treasure, Jim. Who moved it? It was Ben Gunn. Ben Gunn? Shiver me timbers. He ought to be dead. Why, we marooned him on the island three years ago. But he kept alive, found the treasure, and moved it piece by piece to a little cave. You see, when you took me to the doctor that night, you made me promise not to try to escape. Aye? But I didn't promise not to trick you. We knew if we gave you the map, you'd break camp and set out for the treasure. Once in the clearing, you'd be easily surrounded and taken. Avast! Ha, 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 ha. That was a clever scheme, lad. Too bad you're such a gentleman. You'd have made a first-rate pirate. Ah, here's the forecastle. Would you care to have a cup of tea with Hung John? Thank you, sir. Ah, it was uh, kind of you to plead for me, boy. Well, sir, it was you who saved my life. I. It's soft I am in me old age. Not like the good old days of Captain Kidd. Ah, this is the way. This is the way. Ah, such a blithering mouth. Ah, ah. <laughs> now take that bird over there. Over 200 years old she is. She's sailed the seven seas with Captain Kidd, Madagascar, Malabar, Suriname, and Portobello. Twas there she learned the pieces of eight and little wonder. Hi, lad. There was treasure to be had in them days. Jim. Aye, sir. Just between you and me, you think we'll ever go treasure hunting again? And so our story ends. Jim Hawkins and the squire, even Captain Smollett, lived to a ripe old age and enjoyed the fruits of the adventure. As for Long John Silver, well, no one really knows what happened to him. 
but there's a superstition among sailors that his voice can still be heard shouting, Shiver me timbers, have ash with you! And singing his favorite song. Drink and the devil has-